Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right, today's Wednesday. That means tomorrow is Thursday, 6 a.m. Please join us for the Coffee and Coaches Conference call. We usually have a great group of people that come together and we talk about all things professional and technical. And every once in a while, we crap and complain just to get some things off our chest. So it's all very, very helpful. But it's a great time. So, so again, please join us for that. Um, got a squat hinge question. These questions seem to be very, very popular. People seem to have have a lot of questions as to the dis distinguishing characteristics. And this is actually a pretty good one from Mihail. Mihail says, can you please go over what's going on in the uh, lower posterior rib cage during squatting and hinging? I used to think that hinging will compress the posterior rib cage and squatting will expand it. For example, when performing goblet squat with heels elevated, here is below 60 degrees, the lower rib cage will expand. Um, but you've also said that during hinging the posterior lower rib cage expands. My guess is since the rib cage moves the pelvis, there'll be more posterior lower expansion during a hinge and be because the sacrum is nutane, but that contradicts the hinge being more of an axillation based activity. Thank you for the great info. So, so the last part of your question gives us an opportunity to, to really clarify a couple of things that, that we haven't talked about probably in a long time that is kind of important in regards to uh, just a normal uh, breathing as to where we drive some of this, this expansion. And so I'm gonna bring in the skeleton um, to give us a little bit of a representation here. So obviously when we breathe in the diaphragm, diaphragm descends and, and theoretically we're gonna get this sort of uniform expansion um, throughout the lung. Uh, because of gravity, it's gonna fill from the bottom up. If we're standing upright, and so that's kind of like this normal representation. Um, but when, when we talk about concentric muscle activity, um, in addition to the diaphragm that's going to promote uh, thorax expansion, this is why we talk about dorsal rostral expansion a great deal because concentric muscle activity of these intercostals is also gonna promote this, this upper posterior expansion. We're gonna get the up pump panel. So the parasternal intercostals also inhalation biased to, to create this, this expansion, okay? But in doing so, um, we have to consider what, what's happening in this, in this posterior lower aspect um, that, that you mentioned because it is kind of interesting when we talk about squatting versus hinging. So the, when we talk about posterior lower, we're gonna look at the in, inferior angle of the scapula below, <coughs> excuse me, down to about T10 or so because that's gonna be where the, the bottom of the lung actually, actually rests in, in most circumstances. If we talk about the same representation in the pelvis, we're talking about way, way down um, in, in this posterior aspect. So, so we're talking about this lower aspect, of, uh, most lower aspect of the sacrum, and then the coccyx as being the same representation that we just saw in the posterior lower thorax. So that's how far down we're, we're talking about. Now, the cool thing here is we can use my, my archetypes to um, represent the, the two extremes of, of, a, of a hinge versus a squat because we do have a bias by structure that's gonna, gonna help us um, identify this representation. So if we talk about someone that, that is a wide infrasternal angle, so their bias is going to be towards an exhalation strategy by design. And so if I bring my guy back in here, what we're gonna see with the wide ISA is we're gonna see much less expansion in, in the upper thorax. So the dorsal rostral is gonna be biased towards an exhalation strategy. The, the sternum is gonna be biased towards an exhalation strategy. But because of the shape of the diaphragm as it descends in, in a wide ISA, so this is a compensatory strategy of the diaphragm, we're gonna see this posterior lower expansion. So we're biased towards an exhalation strategy which would nutate the sacrum <clears throat> and the coccyx together. So we, we always gotta, we, we can't forget about this little guy, the coccyx is kind of important because we got a lot of glute max that's attached to that sacrotuberous ligament, et cetera. And that's the same representation of the posterior lower rib cage. And so as I move into this, this hinging pattern, that's what I'm gonna kind of see. So we can't just talk about the sacrum. We also have to talk about this posterior lower aspect. If, if I, perform a, 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 an effective hinge, then I'm gonna see the eccentric orientation of this, this posterior lower glute max, which is gonna allow this, this full nutation to occur. So it's not just the sacrum. Again, we gotta, we gotta talk about, about the coccyx here. Um, so I do have, I have more of a compressive strategy at the base of the sacrum, and I do have expansion posterior lower. So I think you're absolutely right in, in regards to, to what we're gonna see in the hinge. Because again, we're gonna see the same thing 
here. I'm going to be biased towards compression in dorsal rostral. I'm going to see more, more expansion in the posterior lower. If I go to my narrow archetype, then we're going to see, we're going to reverse gear. So let me bring this back in. <clears throat> so now I'm going to be biased towards AP expansion here, a little bit more compression here, which is what we're going to see in the pelvis from a squatting perspective. So we're going to be biased more towards counter mutation here. So this is my inhalation bias to the base of sacrum going back the relative position of the of the lower aspect of the sacrum and, and the coccyx is going to be um, more compressed, much like the, the thorax is. So again, this is this is my design for a squatter. Now, let's go to your example with the heels elevated goblet squat and how we're going to get the the relative expansions that we want to see on this posterior aspect of the of the rib cage and of the of the pelvis. So if we use a heels elevated goblet squat, what we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna to try to bias this early propulsive strategy, which is gonna be an inhalation bias. So what we're actually trying to drive here is this, this dorsal rostral expansion and the counter-nutation at the base of the sacrum. But as I move through the excursion of the squat, what I'm actually trying to do is I'm trying to restore the normal mechanics of, of the thorax and the pelvis. And so while I'm starting with this dorsal rostral expansion, counter mutation bias, as I move through the excursion of the squat, what I wanna see is I start with my counter mutation. As I move through this middle range of hip flexion, I want to see the the IR of the of the ilium, and I want to see the nutation of the sacrum, which again is that posterior lower expansion. And then as I go below my sticking point, plus or minus 30 degrees, then I want to see this this re-expansion into the inha inhalation counter nutation. So we are getting dorsal rostral expansion. We are getting the posterior lower expansion under normal circumstances, because that's what we're we're trying to achieve is this normal movement. Uh, of the of the relative expansions in the the posterior rib cage and in the posterior pelvis. So um, the only thing that I would say is that when you start to add load, so when we start to impose load, you're going to see an increase in concentric orientations. You're going to see increase in compressive strategies, um, just because of of the the need to to create this incompressible. Um, axial skeleton that I can they can superimpose load onto and so now all bets are off as far as the strategy is concerned and you'll see all sorts of compensatory strategies that may influence your outcome so please keep that in mind what I'm talking about um, prior to discussing load is the fact that what we want to see from a normal mechanical standpoint so Mihail I hope that helps you understand this to a small degree if you have any other questions please let me know at askbillharmon at gmail.com and I will see you guys on the coffee and coaches conference call tomorrow morning <laughs>